Greetings, explorers. Today's adventure is the part three of making a candlestick holder for a LARP version of Clue, playing the game Clue. We're making a candlestick holder, one of the weapons for the game, for a live action version of playing that game. So in the previous ones, we of course uh, made the mold and then we made the foam cast. So today we are prepping for washing and painting the candlestick holder. So right now uh, what we have is we, we've made the foam mold and now we're washing it down and we're going to use an alkaline soap to do the cleaning initially. And it is totally okay to get these wet, get it into the nooks and crannies. It's totally okay to have the soap soak into it. So that's what our adventure is today. <clears throat> and we're just gonna wash the whole thing down. And the alkaline soap, the Dawn soap, it's gonna neutralize any of the uh, residual chemicals that are on the outside of it. Uh, it is all about getting the paint to stick to foam. So uh, we tried several different me methods of, uh, of painting the foam, and we will show you our final version of what we decided to use. So here we're just rinsing all the soap off best we can. You can see it's soaked in pretty good. And so once we get it all rinsed out, we will set them off to the side to dry, probably for a couple days. We'll probably put a fan on them too to make sure that we get all the moisture out of there. And then we'll do a second step. So the second step of prepping uh, the piece to be painted, we're gonna use some rubbing alcohol. And this is just 70% uh, rubbing alcohol. So these, uh, the candlestick holder, the foam candlestick holder has dried completely. It's been a couple days. And now we're just gonna wipe it down with some alcohol, just in case any of the soap or any of the residual chemicals were brought forward. This last uh, part should be able to uh, wash away any residual chemicals that might've been left behind. So we're gonna work that alcohol into all the nooks and crannies. And preparation's really important. You want that paint to stick. As always, uh, if you do a good job on prep, uh, then it makes everything last so much better. So we're just gonna give it a good rub down, soak it down with some alcohol, and then we'll do the same process again. We'll allow it to dry probably for a couple days but we'll work that in there. We'll get all the nooks and crannies. Perfect. We actually thought about next time uh, using a washing machine. We're gonna throw our foam into a washing machine with some alkaline clothes soap and we're gonna see how that works. So that'll be a fun experiment. So it looks like we got most of it done. We'll give it a good squishy. Perfect. All right. Now I think we will be heading into actually prepping to do the painting. So now you can see the candlestick holder is all prepped and ready to go. The paints that we decided to use uh, our Maker Pro paint from Smooth On. Smooth On is also the people that make the silicon that we used and also the foam uh, casting that we used. Um, so this is their paint line. We did use um, different type of things. We tested on a small piece, but uh, we did try different things. So here what we have is we're going to make the paint flexible. So the paint you could use, you could paint it onto a solid plastic mold. But in this case, because we're putting it on foam, we want the paint to be flexible. So we're using this 
really cool Maker Pro paint flex additive. When you mix these, you're gonna mix them one to one. So basically half is gonna be the flex additive and the other half will be our paint and by mixing the two together it makes them very stretchy and rubbery and then we'll add just a touch of distilled water. That was our test piece and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a sec. But um, so you add the flex additive to it so now the paint will be stretchy and flexible which is fantastic for uh, LARPing. So you want the paint job to be resilient and you want it to be able to flex so it doesn't crack and peel off. So with this, the flex uh, does not change the color of your paint. So it is just an additive. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of distilled water to this. We want our coats to be insanely thin. And so we're gonna do multiple, multiple, multiple uh, painting layers. So we're gonna uh, where we had 40 milliliters of the flex additive, we had 40 milliliters of the actual paint. We're going to add another 10 milliliters of distilled water. So we're going to really thin it up. So it's going to go on in, in thinner coats. But the different things we tested on. So we tried to do an old uh, movie uh, making system where we you mix your paints into... Uh, rubber cement so we did that uh, it went onto the foam fine but it wasn't a resilient finish and it did peel off so that little rock you saw there it did peel off uh, we also tried coating the that piece with contact cement and then painting over that that also peeled off uh, fabric paint worked okay but it wasn't a an overly resilient finish for doing LARPing and there was a few other things that we had tested but here we decided to go with the actual Maker Pro paint line mixed with the flex additive and we're gonna just paint multiple layers so right now you can still see if the uh, the gray of the candlestick holder is showing through the nice part is is this uh, diluted version of paint is uh, soaking really deep into all the nooks and crannies and uh, all the, the, the foam part of it is kind of absorbing it like a sponge. So that's gonna make a really deep finish, making it really resilient in case you, you gotta clock each other over the head with a candlestick, of course. So we're gonna use the brown as a complete base coat. We're gonna paint the entire candlestick holder in a dark brown that'll give us a good base. So as we paint this, uh, we will let it dry a half hour between each coat. Uh, you will notice as I'm going here, I actually have uh, three candlesticks that we're working on. So we're going to make three of them at one time, although we're only going to show you one at each step. So there we go. We get through there. We paint each section. We get that base color down and so the nice part is it's almost like putting a primer down so that thinned version will really stick and adhere to it and we will keep diluting and uh, as we if we need to mix more we'll be using the exact same thing over and over and over again and you want multiple multiple coats multiple thin light coats don't put it on too heavy you want light coats As we do this, um, I am finding myself thinking this is really fun. The thought of using it to do a live action role play version of Clue, it's really awesome. But um, I'm also seeing, you know, I can carry this around at a Renaissance fair or at any of the anime conventions and things like that. So an awful lot of fun. And I do recommend other people to try this. So it's a really good thing to do. So the great part is, you will slowly see this candlestick foam casting slowly turning into the original uh, molded candlestick holder. 
So we're gonna give it a really neat wood grain uh, and we're gonna do a lot of different techniques in order to create that wood grain. And uh, it should be pretty awesome when it's all done. You will also see us as we move forward, uh, we're gonna be introducing a second color. Uh, we wanna kinda keep it all in the same color tones, but you'll see us mix a white now. So we're gonna mix up a white and we're gonna do it exactly the same way that we did the brown. So we're gonna take that flex, we're gonna go half, so one to one again, so half of it will be made up of the flex additive and the other half will be made up of white paint. And then what will end up happening is we will mix the white and the brown together, kind of creating a beige uh, coloration and that's what we'll be using to paint the uh, top and the bottom sections of the candlestick and it will also be part of the process as we try to give it the wood grain look. So equal portions of paint and flex additive and then we will maybe not need the water although it wouldn't hurt to do it but there's going to be water in the brown paint when we mix it in so we may just need to do this right now so there we go we're going to mix up a batch of white in preparation of making a beige when we mix some of the brown and some of the white together and this only takes seconds to do so we'll mix that up bring that back into the picture in just a little bit. So we're gonna put a cap on it, set it aside while we wait for our candlestick holders to dry. So now we're ready for the next coat. And now we're just gonna be using the brown for the mid section there. So we're gonna start creating layer after layer of thinned brown paint with the flex additive. We're gonna keep putting a coat after coat after coat and you'll slowly see the gray foam uh, being covered up and you'll see less and less of that gray foam coloration, the gray look. The mold itself has some really awesome wood grain in it. So whenever we made the original silicon mold, um, it retained with great detail all the really cool wood grain from the original candlestick and that detail is transferred onto the foam when you do the foam cast. So in the end it will all look really neat. It will look like, you know, if you, if you do an expert job on the paint job you can make this look like an actual piece of wood. We of course want ours to look a little bit animated for LARPing. It's a safety thing so you don't pick up the wrong one. You know, you want to make sure you pick up the foam one. We traditionally try to brush with the grain. That helps reduce air bubbling. And then you also want to look for, you know, little puddling and things like that as you, as you do it. And you want to work those puddles uh, into the actual paint job so you don't have little lumpy spots left behind. Another good reason why we dilute the paint. We will do this over and over and over again. We won't make you go through it. We'll, uh, we'll cut to the, uh, the next step. But we wanted you to see how it takes on coloration as we do the paint job. Also, um, you'll notice as we, as we are painting, it'll uh, really get stronger. It'll be um, more flexible, more resilient. All right, so here we go. We're gonna be making our fancy beige tone now. So we've got our brown. We're going to add our white. We want two distinct colors. There we go. Mix it up. Got it on the first try. Looks good. So 
now we'll be using this on the top part and the base. And it's the same process with this. We will be doing layer after layer after layer. Traditionally, you want to shoot for about six to even eight layers, thin layers. So you just keep coating and coating and coating. And uh, by doing a really good job uh, at this point, doing a good job on the paint job, you'll have a much more resilient and lasting paint job on your hard work. Get that all painted up. And you can see the three candlesticks we're actually working on. This process probably took about two weeks for us to finish up. You can go a lot faster. We uh, just took our time, did things between in between it all. And then as we put these layers on, then you'll see us starting to do another step where we start to try to accent and bring out the wood grains on the candlestick holder. That's the base. got to do the top part and the nice thing is, is um, you know it's meant to have an old look to it so you know you don't have to be overly critical with staying in the lines it's totally okay to go outside the lines uh, you want to create obviously sections to it but uh, the original candlestick uh, you can tell the paint job um, you know they, they you, you couldn't get they couldn't get it accurate either so you don't have to worry about things like that that just makes it look even better by having a little bit of overlaying and a little bit of mishap in between it all there we go and so once we get this section done we will do this over and over and over again nice thin coats and then we'll do all three of them as we're going. So you'll be able to see them progress along with the, with the one that we're doing. All right, marvelous. So now we're gonna do a thing called dry brushing dry brushing so we're still using the thinned down paint well now we have our six layers of base paint down so in all reality the uh, LARP weapon is, uh, is already all, all good to go but now we want to create kind of a wood grain look so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the two different colors and match them against each other and we're gonna do layer after layer so we're gonna be doing you know the light color then the dark color light color then the dark color and we're gonna try to create and accent those wood grains that are actually in the foam mold and what we're doing is we're using that uh, watered down uh, paint with the flex additive still in it and we are dabbing the brush before we apply it to the actual mold we want to just create the lightest lightest coating on it to where we are accessing accenting the raised grains that would look so we're just gonna go through and do a little bit of accenting and the fun part is, is then we're gonna go back with the darker color needs a little bit more there we go and we're gonna tone it down with the darker color doing the bottom part with the darker colors and then we'll do the top part also with the darker brown and then we're gonna bounce back and forth probably doing this another four five six times as well on each of the candlestick holders so we're gonna go with a little bit of dark brown then we're gonna put a little bit of light color on top and then we're gonna put a little bit more dark down and then we're gonna do the light color again and I 
I think the only thing to keep in mind as you're doing this is um, these paints, as you apply them, you have to bear in mind that they will dry a couple shades darker than when you first put them on. So kind of keep that in mind as you're doing that. Uh, traditionally paints dry a couple shades darker. Do a little touch up as we go there. And that's dry brushing. So you don't want a lot of paint. You want to keep it kind of dabbed. It is totally okay to have a little bit of mix of colors between the beige and the uh, dark brown on the plate there. So you'll get a more of a natural look as you do that part. And now we do the top part, it's a real quick brushing. And then now you can see it's kind of starting to hit the lower section and you will see the brightness of the beige color will start to be toned down as we do that process. <clears throat> way it doesn't look too unnatural and remembering of course again that the color will be a couple shades darker as it dries all right it's coming out that really does look like the candlestick holder now fantastic So doing this stuff, I highly recommend anybody who would like to do castings and molds and things like that. Uh, this is just wonderful fun. We will be doing a lot more of these type of things for everybody. So we have a whole slew of uh, LARP style things that we're going to be making. And there we go. We're going to do some more toning down. So this entire process is still dry brushing and the entire process is still using the slightly diluted version of Maker Pro Paint and the Flex Additive. So once we finish, the, uh, finish up the uh, first few layers here of the dry brushing, you will see us uh, start doing the second process of you know going over over top of each of these layers so we're gonna like I mentioned earlier that we'll do this it's the same process where you'll get another four or five layers of paint down and just as long as these paint layers are nice and thin you're just improving your paint job on your mold each time you do so now we'll get into the beige, we'll go back over the darker brown. And at first uh, we were just going to do the dry brushing part of it, but we're going to do another uh, type of thing uh, in just a few seconds. We're going to show you another thing where we're going to create continuity uh, in the entire piece when we're done here. And you'll also notice, like a lot of my brushing, I'm going in certain directions. I'm still trying to maintain the direction of the wood grain. So I'm still going in the direction of the, the wood grain that was on the original mold. So sometimes I go downward and sometimes I go the, the length, the long way. And it just depends on which direction the wood grain is going you want to stay with the wood grain to create a more natural look to it. Now we'll do the top part and tone down the darkness of the brown. But we want the brown there because that helps us with that, that wood grain look. Alright, so now we're getting down to that next step. So at this stage, we're going to do a thing called a wash. So where we had used the dark brown as our base coat, we still want that to be the primary look of the candlestick, of the 
candlestick holder. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go with a very diluted, so it's going to be basically 90% water and then some of the uh, brown uh, Maker Pro paint with flex additive. So we're just going to really dilute it now. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over and over and over, over this entire mold uh, with a very diluted version. And so what will happen is, is as this dries, it'll tone down and create a continuity in the entire piece. So this is what we call doing a wash. Uh, you'll also find that a lot of the terms that I'm using, uh, we do the same thing when we paint miniatures. So you'll do dry brushing on miniatures. You will do uh, put washes down on miniatures. And the nice part is when you do this wash here, if any of the lighter colors had gotten into the lower grains, this wash will now seep into those lower grains and re-darken them for you. And it will also, uh, as it dries, it'll create an aged look to the piece. So whereas it might look too shiny and too new, now you can see it's kind of matting it all down and browning it all down and making it look like it's something from the olden days. And it's accenting any of the nooks and crannies that the paints were a little too thick to accent. And this one here, real easy to do. You're just putting it on there. Your paints, you have many layers of paints now, so it's only seeping into the nooks and crannies of the actual paint job. And then you're just dabbing it down. And then we will actually do this three, four times as well. And so each time we do it, we have to bear in mind that the paints will dry a couple shades darker. And you just keep doing that over and over again. And you can see how, especially here, you can really see how that wash gets into the grains and helps create that piece for you, gives it a much more natural look. And we actually will do this three, four times. This is the final step. So after we've done all these paint jobs, you want to keep the paint job uh, moisturized in its own special way. So we're going to use an Epic Armory version of a silicon gel. And this one here, yeah, I probably should wear gloves, but I, I wanted to be able to feel uh, where I was rubbing the gel into it. So this is basically just a kind of a diluted silicon coating that you're going to put on this. It's a protectorant, so it'll help uh, you know with any type of weathering. It'll uh, create a nice moisture barrier on your paint job so that'll really bring longer life to it you know sometimes whenever you if anybody who's done LARP you'll feel kind of an oiled slickness to some of your your uh, swords and things like that that are made out of foam uh, this is what they're putting on it it's just this little uh, gel silicon and you just rub it into the nooks and crannies but this will make my paint job and my mold last twice as long so it's a great protectorant. So you just rub it all down, get it in all the different spots, find all the nooks and crannies. And we are very close to finishing this guy. And so once we get this all coated, I will go back over it with a cloth and wipe down any of the excess. Fantastic. We just go around and we wipe it all down. You'll note none of the paint's coming off on the rag, so that's good, it's staying. We did a good job preparing, prepping it. Good job washing it down. And then we're just taking off any of the excess silicon gel now. And there it is. Fantastic.